Now I'm going to design a system with free form mirrors. This is actually fairly easy with Synopsys because it provides some, some really nice tools. Uh, let me show you how that works. First of all, you make a picture. Here, I'm, I've drawn a sketch. Say a light. Light's going to come in here. It's going to hit surface 2, then go to 3, then go to 4, then go to 5, and the image is down here at 6. So you give it a starting geometry like this. And I've put these numbers into a file. Open up the excellent editor. Here's the FF build file, freeform build. You give it an object, uh, 2 degree semi field, 10 millimeter semi aperture, wavelength, CDF lines, and so on, circular field of view. And for the geometry, I'm specifying for each mirror the X, Y, Z positions of the starting points, which is what I measured off that, off that graph that I made. And here's the image. And I'm saying for the shapes, I want the four mirrors to be Zernike polynomial surfaces. All right, just giving it no more than that, I'm going to run this. And here the program comes up with a starting configuration where it has adjusted the tilt angles of each of those mirrors so the light hits the next mirror. And that's all I can do at this stage. The surfaces are all flat. But it's created a set of variables and a merit function. Let me show you what's in here. The parameter file is the variables. And here's a skip block. These are variables which if you, if you don't skip them, these would vary the Y and Z positions of each of the mirrors. But to start with, I want to keep them where I put them, and we'll, we'll free them up later. And then for each mirror, it's going to vary the radius, sorry, the, the, the alpha, the global alpha tilt angle, of course, then the radius, and these are variables for all the Zernike coefficients, which I'm not going to use until we get, get, get started. You want to start off correcting low order problems with the low order variables. So here they are for all the mirrors. And down here, it's got the, the, um, the merit function. It's going to generate a grid of rays at several field points. Uh, here's another skip block. If I don't skip these, these will correct the mirrors to be where I, where I started. Suppose I really want them there. Well, this will tend to keep them there. I, I don't care if, if they move around, so I'm going to leave this as a skip block. And down here, you see we have a whole pile of what we call C-clear aberrations. And the purpose of these is to keep each mirror out of the way of the beam from the other mirrors. And there's a whole bunch of different combinations. They all have to be controlled. So they're all here in the mirror function, a whole bunch of them. All right, so let's run this and see what happens now. Well, bingo. It's got curves on these surfaces. The image is focusing at the right place. The mirrors do indeed stay out of the way of the other beams, but the image isn't very good, and that's not too surprising because the mirrors are still spherical at this point. So we have to free up some more aberrations. I'm going to free up, let's say, G3 through 10 of each of the mirrors. This button here gets rid of the exclamation point, which is how they were commented out. So I'll free those up. Okay, so let's run this again and watch what happens to the to the image quality. Okay, well it gets better and better. We're down to about a wave now. Alright, that's an improvement. So let's do something. Now, now I'm going to comment out this skip block because now I want the mirrors to be free to move wherever they want to go. And I'm going to free up, let's say, some more of these G variables. Let's say through G23. For each of the four mirrors. Okay, so let's run this and watch what happens. See the merit function coming down, the wavefront getting better. Okay, we have a design now that's just over a tenth of a wave. Hey, that's a pretty good system. And only took just a few minutes. Okay, well, we're not done yet. These are just surfaces right now. We have to turn them into actual mirrors. And I'm going to do that with the Edge Wizard. See right there? I click the Edge Wizard button, and I click Create All. Yes, and bingo. Now they're mirrors. They have an actual thickness. But the, the thicknesses are, are, are too thin at the moment. So I'm going to go here. And I'm going to increase the thickness 
let's say a surface 2. Watch that there's the mirror right here as I click the spin buttons. See it getting thicker? That's about right. I'll go to surface 3 and I'll spin it to make it thicker. And go to the next mirror and make it thicker. And the last mirror. Okay, so there's my system. It's not a bad system. Let me show it to you in um, as a rotating solid model. And we can ask, well, how good is this design? And that's easy to show. I'm going to go to the mapping program, menu mapping, MMA. And I'm saying I'm going to map over a grid of object points. I'm going to map the wavefront variance. The object uh, points are going to be a rectangular grid contained within a circle, 7 by 7. The ray pattern is a grid contained within a circle with a grid number of 9. Exploded analog, plot the map, and show circles. So I execute this. Now you'll see the worst field point is about here, let's say a little over the 6 tenths field in the skew direction. Okay, well, let's take a closer look at that. MDI, diffraction image analysis. Let's go a point spread function. Let's say 0.6 of the skew field and run that. And here's the, here's the image. This is essentially a, a perfect image. So we have here a very good design. And the synopsis did almost all the work. I didn't even need all, all of these other coefficients. You can put those in if you want. How about the distortion? Let's say G, say 21 rays. Here it is, very little distortion. Uh, and that's how easy it is uh, to design a freeform mirror system. I loaded up some other examples that are kind of fun to look at. Here's another one here. I'll show you it in the rotating solid model. And here's another one. And another, you can get all kinds of systems here. Just tell it where you want the mirrors and let it let the program do all the work. And that's how easy it is to design a freeform mirror system with Synopsys. Now there's a little more to it than that. Uh, if you look over in the help file. If I just go back here and select the characters FF build, see down here it says it's a multi-line command, and you go right to the help file and you can read all about this wonderful, powerful feature for designing freeform systems. Thank you. Synopsis is a fast, powerful, cost-effective program with a perpetual licensing model. Request a trial today at osdoptics.com and start designing with great efficiencies.